Welcome back to this online open course about species distribution modeling. In the previous module, we looked at models for which you only need to provide occurrence data to predict the distribution of a species. In this module, we will focus on statistical regression models, which use both presence and absence data. We covered in module 3 that absence data can either be true absence data or, if such data is not available, you can make up absence data, which is referred to as pseudo-absence data. Presence-absence algorithms compare the environmental conditions of occurrence sites with those of absence sites. The statistical regression models that I will explain in this module use all the data available to estimate the coefficients of the predictor variables and they construct a function that best describes the effect of the environmental variables on species occurrence. The suitability of a particular model is often defined by specific model assumptions. In this module, I will explain the background of three different models. Generalized linear models, generalized additive models, and the multivariate adaptive regression splines technique. These models are an extension of simple linear regression models. Linear regression models work on a few assumptions, such as the assumption that we can use a straight line to describe the relationship between the response and the predictor variable. This implies that a constant change in a predictor leads to a constant change in the response variable. For example, the number of cricket chirps increases with increasing temperature. In a linear regression model, you would assume that an increase of one unit in temperature will also lead to an increase of one unit in the number of chirps. These assumptions are often violated in species distribution modeling, particularly when the response is a probability, like the chance that a species is present at a given location. In this case, a generalized linear model is used which allows more flexibility in the distribution of the response. A generalized linear model with binomial data, such as the presence and absence of a species, is called a logistic regression. If we would draw a line through these data points, it would look like an S-shape, and this line represents the probability of species occurrence. So if all your species data points are absences, the probability of occurrence is zero, whereas if all your points are presences, the probability of occurrence is one. At the value of the environmental variable where absence changes into presence, the corresponding probability of occurrence is 0 0.5. This means that there is an equal number of occurrence points and absence points recorded at that value of the environmental variable. But of course, in a species distribution model, we are not looking at the effect of only one environmental variable, but at several different variables. In a generalized linear model, all predictors that you put into the model are combined in an overall score for the environmental suitability, the so-called linear predictor. Because the probability of species occurrence is based on binomial data that are not normally distributed, we need a function that links the response variable to the linear predictor. This is a so-called link function. And for binomial data, this is a logit function. With the logit function, we take the log of the odds ratio, which is the ratio of the probability of presence over the probability of absence. This link function transforms the y-axis to be able to fit a straight line between the response and the linear predictor. The formula that describes this line operates on the log odds scale and has a constant baseline which refers to the log odds ratio that you get when you set all environmental variables to their mean values. And it's the intercept of the straight line with the y-axis. And then the effect of each environmental variable is included by multiplying the value of the variable with its coefficient and this affects the slope of the line. The next statistical regression algorithm that I'll explain is the Generalized Additive Model, or GAM. Generalized Additive Models are an extension of Generalized Linear Models, and they have the same features that are unique to these type of models. 
The linear predictor that combines all environmental variables that you put into the model in an overall environmental suitability score and the link function that transforms the response into the log of the odds ratio. While GLMs construct a linear function between the response and the predictors, a GAM takes into account that the relationship might be of a more complex form and not entirely straight. To fit this complex relationship, the coefficients of the predictor variables in the linear predictor are replaced by a smoothing function. For each environmental variable that you put into the model, the GAM algorithm calculates a smooth function that fits the data as closely as possible. In the final model, the smooth functions of each of these variables are added. Because GAMs are additive, it is difficult to include interactions between predictors, and this is not often done. There are a lot of different smoothing functions available, but in species distribution models, the most widely used is the cubic smoothing splines method. The last statistical regression algorithm that I'll explain in this module is the multivariate adaptive regression splines algorithm. And while we group this algorithm within the category of the statistical regression models, it also has characteristics that are similar to machine learning models. The multivariate adaptive regression splines algorithm is another extension of linear models and it's a powerful algorithm that is able to model complex relationships between the response variable and the predictor variables. I'll explain how the algorithm works with this example in which we plot the probability of occurrence for a species against an environmental variable. It's clear that these points do not reflect a linear relationship between the predictor and the response. The multivariate adaptive regression splines algorithm divides the range of values for the environmental variable in several groups. And for each group, a separate linear regression is modeled, each with its own slope and its own associated error. The separate lines are connected, and these connections are called knots. The multivariate adaptive regression splines algorithm automatically searches for the best spots to place the knots. Each knot has a pair of basis functions. These basis functions describe the relationship between the environmental variable and the response. The first basis function takes the maximum value out of two options. It's either zero or it is re the result of the equation environmental variable value minus the environmental value of the knot. So in this example, the knot is at the value of 11 for the environmental variable. For any value below of 11, the outcome of the equation environmental variable minus not will result in a negative number, which is smaller than zero, and thus the outcome of the basis function is zero. This means that the outcome of basis function one is zero for all environmental values up to the not, while for all values after the not, the outcome of basis function one is the value of the environmental variable minus 11. The second basis function has the opposite form, with the outcome of zero for all environmental values after the knot, and the outcome of 11 minus the value of the environmental variable before the knot. For a simple model with only one environmental variable and only one knot, the final model includes again a baseline, which is the mean of the response values, and the two basis functions on each side of the knot. However, most models will include multiple knots and multiple environmental variables, leading to more complex models. In general, these three statistical regression models are very useful as they can all handle both continuous and categorical predictor variables, and they are designed to fit complex relationships between the predictors and the response. Generalized additive models and multivariate adaptive regression splines are more robust to outliers than GLMs, but in return more susceptible to overfitting. Generalized linear models and generalized additive models are able to work well with smaller data sets, but it's good to keep in mind that with the more predictor variables that you want to include in the model, the larger your occurrence data set needs to be. 
As a rule of thumb, the number of predictive variables should be less than the total number of occurrences divided by 10. So if you have an occurrence set of 100 points, you want to include a maximum of 10 environmental variables as predictors in your model. Multivariate adaptive regression splines can handle large data sets very well, and despite the complexity of this algorithm, it tends to work very efficiently and fast. While these algorithms are a bit more complex to understand and interpret, they are definitely worth considering when you want to run a species distribution model. Thank you for watching Module 6 of the Species Distribution Modeling course. In Module 7 we will go into the details of the last group of models, the machine learning models. Mm -hmm.